Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live. It's America's longest running talk show on computers. It's Computer America. Bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. And welcome into the Computer America Show. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone, and welcome into another edition. And what a great show we have planned for you today. Now, today we have, of course, I think many of you have heard of them before. They've been on the show a number of times. And, of course, they're back with some new products, some new features. And, you know, if you haven't heard about Uma, about Uma before, then you're in for a treat because we're going to go over, you know, just about everything that they have to offer. And... You know, the to really highlight their latest features, which include security. So, yeah, you know, we're going to talk about all of that and more. And, of course, later on in the show, if we have time, we will, of course, be doing computer and technology news. And, by the way, there's a lot of great stories. And if you want links to any of them, as well as maybe our guest website or anything else of that nature, head on over to ComputerAmerica.com. Because, just like we just said a second ago... Uh, yeah, there's going to be in the show notes links to any and everything, including the archives, including video and audio that you could possibly want and listen to. If maybe you miss something, if you're out jogging, if you are, uh, you know, at work, if you're doing whatever it is that you may be doing, don't worry in the show notes, don't have to write a thing down. And also while you're at computer America, be sure to check out the computer America contest, which by the way, I'm going to go look over right now, but I believe you know, this one is actually one of our biggest contests yet. We are giving away the Keys to Go keyboard by Logitech. And yeah, a lot of you are entering and it's a great thing to see. And I want, I want to say thank you to everyone who's entering for a chance to win that. And then, of course, lastly, I wanted to mention the video stream. Because not only can you hear Computer America, but you can, of course, watch Computer America. And that's going to be helpful for today because we are going to be showing off the UMA website as well as any other video videos that we deem important for the show. So with all of that said, I think I'm just going to bring in our guest today. And for those of you who do not know, we have Mr. Brian Jacket here with us. And he is the Director of Public Relations at UMA. And yeah, let me bring him on. So Brian, welcome into the Computer America Show. And again, thanks for coming on. Hey, Ben. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Our pleasure. Our pleasure indeed. And yeah, like I said, Uma has not been sitting idly since the last time you guys were on. I think it's been, oh, good eight, nine months. So anything that's happened in the interim, uh, you know, we, you know, we could, of course, let our listeners know. But for any of our first time listeners who maybe have not heard of Uma, why don't you give a quick rundown of the company and what it is Uma does? Sure. Uh, Uma is a um, Uma is a, a company that's been around for uh, about ten years, actually. And uh, the, the simplest way to describe Uma is we make a product that allows you to make uh, phone calls uh, from your home um, using the internet for free. And uh, we we sell a product called the Uma Tello. It costs ninety nine dollars. It's a one time purchase. You connect it to your internet connection. You uh, Connect your existing, you know, phone, analog phone, or multi handset, you know, phone that you have, into it. Um, or we also sell a handset that wirelessly connects to it. And then you you are free to make uh, unlimited uh, phone calls nationwide. And all you pay on a monthly basis is taxes and fees, which range from about four to seven dollars a month, depending on which state you live in. Um, so that's. That's the basis of our of our our product. Um, but over the years, we've added more and more features, more and more functionality to it. Uh, made it really a smarter home phone experience. Um, we've we've introduced very robust call blocking to 
weed out unwanted robocallers, telemarketers, spammers, et cetera. Um, we give you the ability to have an instant second line so that if you're talking on the phone like I am to you right now mm -hmm. and my wife picks up the other handset, she can hit the talk button and instantly be able to, to make another phone call um, and I can continue to go on. Um, and, uh, and other features, you know, we, we have an app for your mobile device which allows you to use the Internet connection, a Wi-Fi connection to make calls from the app. Uh, and, and more recently, um, We've, inter we've integrated a lot more smart home products and services uh, into the Umatella system. So, for example, uh, we have a skill for the Amazon Echo, which allows you to make hands-free, uh, initiate a hands-free voice, uh, a, a hands-free call using your voice, or listen to your uh, voicemail using mm. your voice. You can connect the Umatello to a Nest thermostat or a Nest Protect, and let's say the Nest Protect uh, uh, detects smoke. It can alert you uh, on your mobile phone of that, and you can hit a button and dial 911 as if you're at home, so you can talk to your emergency dispatcher uh, for your you know, home location, even if you're not at home at the time. So we've done a lot of, of things to really make this a smarter home phone experience, um, more convenience, but also more value, more safety, and more security. And the things that we want to talk about today are, are really an extension of that as well. Right. No, very well said. And I was going to bring up the fact that you do work with the uh, you know, the Nest thermostat. I was going to ask you how in the world you got a home phone system to work with a thermostat. But it sounds like, you know, it's um, <laughs> you, you, you explained that pretty well. So makes sense there. And of course, the idea of smart technology, you know, smart devices coming into the home. It's it only makes sense that, you know, if you don't work with them, People are going to, of course, you know, kind of wonder why aren't you, you know, taking advantage of all the different, you know, connected devices out there. So good to see that. And like you just said, I mean, you know, again, we can touch uh, lately a little bit later about the base, you know, handset and, you know, things like that. But why don't we jump into, you know, some of the add-ons? Because, again, that seems to be, you know, where a lot of the innovation from UMA is you know, kind of uh, coming from because, you know, it, it uh, we use uh, two different UMA systems here um, at Computer America for our phone system. Uh, we really, really like them. And, you know, I'll just say that the system that we have have not replaced it in like six, six or so years. I guess this would be a question for you. Yeah. Um, would the hardware that we purchased, you know, five years ago or so be any different than the hardware that was purchased, you know, that you can purchase today? Well, it, it, you know, it depends on, on which hardware it is. I mean, I think the original UMA hub, which was a silver device with these big white buttons. We don't have that um, one. We really have the black one. Is, yeah. is hard. What's that? Oh, uh, you have the we, black one? Okay. Yeah, yeah, the black one. Okay. So the UMA hub was our original product. And that one, um, while it still works, a lot of those um, features that I described earlier uh, really are not compatible with it. And that just has to do with the fact that that was – it developed so long ago that you know it's it's hard to make as you know with technology it's hard to make everything work for you know uh, there's processing power there's all sorts of different types of requirements that you know some hardware is not going to be be quite compatible um the umatello which it sounds like you have right there's a couple different versions of it um but they but both of them um offer the features a lot of the features that I talked about, whether it be the smart home integrations, um, the, the instant second line, the mobile app, the call blocking features, um, the ability to, to, to you know, listen to your voice or uh, get an audio recording of your voicemail in your inbox, uh, your, your email inbox, things like that. Um, and uh, some of the stuff we're talking about today, um, home security and internet security, all works with those those products as well. So we do our best to to make, you know, uh, even the hardware that we made, you know, four or five, five, six years ago, compatible with um, these types of uh, products and services. But you know, you reach a limit, obviously, right. on what you can do. And there, it does come a time where, where we, you know, we encourage customers if they really like what we're doing and also like some of the stuff we're working on to consider, um, you know, up, updating their system and and and. Um, getting you know getting a hold of the the latest and greatest hardware for the best uh, the best experience. 
very good point and i had not considered that so yeah no something to look into but like i said um you have a new product here and it's you know I, and i can't tell if this is a replacement in addition to because um home security obviously we just had uh, companies such as netgear on talking about their arlo system which is like a series of you know uh, connected webcams or security cameras uh we've yep. had you know many other companies that come on and the idea that you should you know not pay uh you know one of these large companies to come in with a cookie cutter uh home security solution i think that you know a lot of companies are coming out and saying we have a solution for you it's going to be cheaper and it's going to be more customizable to what you want so why did uma decide to get into the home security market and what does uma kind of offer for their you know for their home security option yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, I, I think that, that, that we looked at it a couple of different ways, obviously. Um, we have an install base of people who enjoy our product. It is a communications product, so it inherently actually is very, very different than a lot of these other um, companies that are offering you know, some form of, an, of security or enhancing security system. And, and I think the other thing is that, that we are developing a solution that's what we call the DIY, a do-it-yourself solution, with no contract, um, where it can be moved easily from location to location, as the same as, as your Umatello can be moved if you if you move or you change, or if you're a college student um, or you know renting a, an apartment or a condo. You know, we look at, at home security as a vital, vital component um, of not only the smart home but just the home in general. And a lot of times, people kind of get put off by what they fear is is the initial cost, mm-hmm. right? All the sunken costs of the hardware and all these different things, and then also the ongoing uh, cost, the cost of a third party managing this and and um, providing it, and 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 also the fact that it, that a lot of times these things are are multi year contracts that are difficult to break. So we said, hey, we've got this communications hub, which actually can be really beneficial, and I'll get to why that is. Um, and it's secure. We use DEC. Um, and we can, we can, you know, hey, we we could take sensors like door, window, motion, water sensors, connect them to the Umatello wirelessly, right? So there's no wires involved or whatnot. Um, allow you to to easily install these around your house. The cost of the sensors are anywhere between twenty-five and thirty-five dollars each, depending on which one you you purchase. And then uh, be able to manage this through an app on your iOS or Android device and be notified of activity in your house, whether that's activity, someone opening a window, opening a door, um, sensing motion in the house. Uh, you know, if you, if you see something open like that, or um, even sometimes more importantly, um, moisture. So, you know, if this is at the base of a water heater or in your basement, um, we have this little moisture sensor, which uh, basically has a little golden prong that you put down on the, at ground level, and then mm-hmm. when it sends, you know, when it feels there's water, and you might have a flooding problem or or a broken water pipe or something like that, um, you can be notified. And the best part of our system, because it is uh, it is connected to the Umatello, is that if you get an alert, so let's say I'm in, let's say I'm at the office, but I could be anywhere. I could be in another state. I could be in another country. And I get an alert on my phone that a door has been opened. And then I get an alert uh, that motion has been detected. And I know nobody's there. We're on vacation or I'm, or I know that my wife and my kids are not in the house. Uh, I then can go to the, the UMA home security app and we have a little feature called remote 911. And this is a button that you press and then it will initiate a phone call to your local dispatcher, it will call as if it is dialing from your home phone to your local dispatcher, and within a matter of seconds, you're talking to your local dispatcher um, from you know your neighborhood and be able to get the most immediate help possible. And why is this important? Well, because if I'm at the office, which is in another city, mm-hmm. or I'm out of state or even out of the country, and I try to dial 911 from my cell phone, I'm not going to get my local dispatcher. I'm going to get the dispatcher 
from where I am at that present time. If, if I would get one at all, if I'm international, I wouldn't really right. get one at all because 911 doesn't exist overseas. So this is a really, really great feature. It's actually some of the same technology we use with our implementation with the UMA, excuse me, with the Nest Protect that I was describing earlier, where you can get a notification about a smoke, right, and hit a button and be dialing your, your uh, local dispatcher in that regard as well. Um, it, it's just great, great uh, value and security for customers. And we can do this because we are a communications device. And a lot of the, the competitors in this space, especially in the DIY home security space, don't have this communications capability where not only can you see that things are happening, but you can take direct action with a, with a matter of, uh, in a matter of seconds with the press of a button. Uh, no, that makes a lot of sense. And, and again, I, I found that feature where you can call 911 and of course you get your local dispatcher. Um, very, very innovative because, you know, we've, we had that conversation, uh, you know, with another one of our guests and, that's a very hard thing to overcome because, you know, either you get the one that you're registered to or it's a big headache. So it sounds like you've taken that completely out of the equation, which is absolutely great. And, you know, all these devices, you, you mentioned a lot of sensors. And essentially, you know, again, we just showed the video uh, up on your website and we're showing the home security website over at UMA. And, you know, there's a lot of sensors and they all have to tie into a base station and you're showing what looks like an UMA, uh, you know, Tello device, but it's white this time. Is this a special device that you have to right. have, or does this work with existing UMA Tellos? No, that's that's what's great about it. Is it works with your existing UMA Tello. We happen to have a white version that we do make available. They are white sensors, so it looks pretty nice in a picture, as right. you can as you can see. Um, but uh, this works with your existing Tello, and that's what's great about it. Is that you know, our customers don't have to buy a different, a new base station to take advantage of this. It really works with their existing setup, their existing hardware, which is, you know, even more value, right? You're, you're an UMA customer. You have had a great experience with our product and our service. Um, you might be a premier customer, um, which is our value added, um, you know, 35 plus features for $9.99 a month. If you're a premier customer and you're an UMA, you know, your UMA customer in your premier uh, level, mm -hmm. uh, the home security has no monthly fee. It's built into your premier subscription of $9.99 a month. So, uh, you know, yet another really great feature, 36 plus now, um, that you can add in there. And really, only the, the only sunken cost you have to get this up and running is buying the sensors. You know, you might buy one or two, three or four sensors, start testing it out, see how it works. And then if you see uh, a need to add more, you can just add them on there. But there's really not a big sunken cost up front. Um, if you're not an UMA Premier cust uh, subscriber, it's $5.99 a month. So it's still very, very affordable. Yeah. Uh, nothing close to you know, some of the third-party managed systems, which are $30, $40 a month. Um, I see it as a, you know, look at it from, you know, a college uh, student who rents a house eight months out of the year, right? Doesn't want to get sunk into a contract. I mean, this is why, uh, why things like Netflix, I think, are so popular on college campuses because, you know, the internet connection is the most important thing in the house. Um, in this regard, you know, you, you, you sign up for the UMA Home Security um, you use it while you're in school to protect the house, make sure things are, are in good shape. And then um, you, uh, you, know, you can cancel it at the end of nine months or whatever time it is, and there's no penalty on top of that. So, right. um, you know, or take it with you, bring it home and set it up at your home and, and set it up uh, the sensors there, you know, back at your parents' place or something like that. So it and, moves with you yeah. very easily the same way, obviously, the Umatello does. Right. And I mean, you know, uh, if we're going with the college thing, think about a dorm room, put it on your door, put it on your window. And obviously, you know, no one's ever going right. to call ADT out to your dorm room and say, hey, you know, wire up my dorm room. It's not going to happen. But with this, obviously, <laughs> through the DIY method, you uh, you can absolutely do it yourself. And, you know, uh, I, I'm looking through all these and it's a shame that you came on when you did, because, you know, about two weeks ago, I just I just purchased uh, you know, two water sensors for, you know, for the house here. And they're both, 
you know, they, they both just have loud chirping and, you know, they aren't connected. They aren't smart. And it's a shame because I already have obviously uh, Uma and I wish I knew about this solution beforehand, but Hey, you're here now. We're learning about it <laughs> and I'll probably look into that. But, uh, but that just kind of raised the question of that chirping helps if you're there. And I know that, you know, you can get a text message anywhere and especially if you're home does, uh, you know, like the water sensor, the door sensor, the window sensor, do they make any kind of physical, you know, like if you're in person, any kind of indication that they're there or is it strictly through the application? That's a good question. Um, yes, the Umatello actually has a speaker phone, right? And so uh, if it senses, you can, you can totally adjust this, right? You can say, you can, you can have the notifications on as much as or, or as little as you want. You can just use the regular iOS or Android notifications in the app. Mm -hmm. You can get a text message. You can get a phone call. Um, you can also have it turned on so that the, the base station says something as well. So okay. that would be the speaker that's on the base station would, would chime if they're, you know, if the, if one of the sensors is tripped and it, uh, you know, says, you know, or open or window open or you know, whatever that, whatever right. that wording is. So, um, and I think, you know, the other thing I was going to say about the system as well is that, you know, the first three sets of sensors that we have are door window motion and uh, moisture, water right. and moisture. Um, by no means are they the, the only ones we will do. And we will look at a number of other types of um, products that we can integrate in the system, not only from ourselves, but also look at partners and look to um, uh, uh, integrate products that are developed by partners who maybe have, um, you know, more extensive experience in some of the places that we have, have yet to, to go into. And I think that that's an important thing to consider as well um, as, we, as we look at this is like, you know, we're not, we're not going to build UMA branded sensors for every single type of, of, of thing. If there's another right. company that's created a camera or, or something like that that, you know, um, is, is out there is doing really good work, and we can integrate it into our system, then we're going to do that. And I think that's, that's you know, that brings, again, more value to that, that customer. Netgear, I think he's talking to you. But, no, I, it's, uh, I think the very, no, you know, the very noticeable one, um, actually, I have two questions, but, of course, it kind of led into this one. Uh, the very noticeable exception to your sensors is currently you have motion, which is kind of what, uh, you know, kind of what this next one is. But, the very obvious one that you're missing is, of course, cameras. And, you know, being able to monitor your home, being yeah. able to monitor outside your home. Um, obviously, you know, your, your your base plan of 599 or free if you have the premium membership. But, um, you know, if you are a premium, uh, I'm sorry, a premier subscriber. But at the same time, I, you know, after just talking with a few companies, what goes into video monitoring video surveillance video um you know kind of video security not only do you have to have the video but people want backups they want storage they want streaming they want you know it's a huge headache right. so is this kind of why you're holding back from the video camera you know marketplace is you just don't want to build out that much infrastructure and kind of let someone else you know tie into it well i think that you know you look at video is very robust right and like you just you just pointed out perfectly right there is uh there's not only the camera itself, and and the technology there is pretty robust, right? Mm -hmm. um, whether it be a company like Ring or or Netgear or you know August um, uh, that have done these doorbell cameras and other types of of camera or obviously Drop Cam and, and Nest now as well. So there's a very robust you know technology back um, uh, backed around this um, that also includes the cloud DVR, the ability you know the integration into apps and, and whatnot. And I think the other thing, obviously, is that, that there's, uh, you know, there is a market where people have invested in these products and services. And I don't think that we want to look at this and say, hey, we want to totally reinvent the wheel here. Right. If we can take a leveraged approach um, where people have invested, you know, hundreds of dollars in this type of product, it's a much more robust Type of, of technology product than a door window motion or, or water sensor from a purely cost and you know kind of back-end systems perspective alone um, if we can integrate that into our own service to give more value to that customer then then that is that is beneficial to us 
but it's obviously more importantly it's beneficial to to our to our customers so um, I think that 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 these first three that we have out there are important they are um, they will bring great value for the cost of them you know between twenty five and thirty five dollars each right. and the monthly cost which is five dollars and ninety nine cents a month or included in your premier subscription of nine dollars and ninety nine cents a month um, and then we'll look for opportunities um, to expand that, uh, whether it be through our own making or through uh, working with other companies and partnerships. Right. And, you know, that that's one of the great things about the, the Internet of Things, the connected home, that kind of thing. I mean, there there really are, you know, you named, uh, you know, half a dozen. There's things like Canary. I mean, there's, you know, many companies out there who yep. uh, can fill in any kind of gap that you maybe want. And again, to to be clear to all of our audience out there. Um, you know, Brian keeps mentioning three different sensors. I believe it's kind of because um, you kind of count the door and the window sensor as one, the moisture is two, and then the motion sensor is three. So, um, yeah. So that's, that's correct. Right. Yep. So, so multiple kinds of sensors. Uh, last question about this before we move on to Internet security. Um, how many uh, how many devices or sensors can you connect to one home system? Um it's pretty much unlimited. I mean, I, I, it, I think there's a, there's a top line of, oh, she's over a hundred, I believe, but I, okay. I don't think that, um, uh, you actually, I, I think that, that it's, um, I, I want to say it's, it's, uh, it's a, over a hundred and I can confirm that, but, um, I believe that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere over 50, you get a little redundant. So no, it's great. As many devices as you need, it seems like you're going to be able to hook it up right there. So that's great. And you know, uh, Brian, I I'm going to have to kind of start this off by saying that if you don't mind, um, I don't think we're going to get to the entire internet security offering from UMA in the next three minutes. So, uh, hopefully you can stay over a little bit so we can wrap up, uh, wrap this up. Sure. All right, perfect. So, but yeah, let's so, but let's at least get started with the internet security. And you know, again, UMA phones. You uh, you're of course using you utilize the internet. Um, you know, and that it, you know to make phone calls. But I don't think many people consider the you know consider your telephone system. You know, as few as you know people are having nowadays. Because let's face it, unless you have a voice over IP, people are losing or ditching traditional corded landline. Uh, more and more every single year but people really don't consider that kind of security and people definitely don't consider security coming from a service such as yourself so uh, again just like the home yeah. security why and what you know why did you decide to do this and what do you have to offer that's so different yeah again this goes back to the, the, the umatello being um, inside the home obviously providing great value to customers for voice communications, um, being connected to the internet, we looked at an opportunity to introduce a service that um, is in partnership with a company called Zscaler, who provides enterprise class security for large corporations and um, are, have integrated their cloud-based security uh, service um, to protect against malware, spyware, phishing, you know, malicious links, um, all these different things. It's updated in the cloud up to a thousand times a day um, if not more, um, because things move so fast. And then basically we can provide this by, by you know, using the Internet to <laughs> send this um, to, to, you know, empower the, the Umatello to be a, because it's connected to the network, to protect all the devices that are on that network. So that could be laptops and desktop computers, PC or Mac. That can be iOS or Android smartphones or tablets. Any of these devices that are using the internet inside a home can be protected from all these malicious uh, links. And it's important because obviously in today's digital age, you know, these devices are being used for so many different things, whether it be for schoolwork, for entertainment, um, to pass time, what have you. Uh, we want to make sure that our children, and I look at it the same way, I want to make sure my parents as well are mm -hmm. protected from things that could get them in trouble where information is taken, um, where uh, they can be charged, um, you know, credit card information is taken, personal information is taken. Um, they, can, they can click on links that can provide 
you know, that can infect their, their computers or the different systems with all these this spyware and malware and viruses and whatnot. So we look at this as being a really great value added service for our customers. Yeah, no. And, and of course, we're going to get into, again, on the other side of the break, how to install this and what exactly this, uh, you know, what actually you protect from. So, again, everyone out there, we are talking to Mr. Brian Jacket. He is the Director of Public Relations at UMA. And again, we're talking to UMA. Check it out, UMA.com. And we'll be right back with more Computer America just after this. We are all Brother Wolf. Ten years ago, a group of locals banded together to create positive change. We took animals into our homes, held adoption events at local retailers, and talked to the community about our mission to help build a no-kill Asheville. A decade later, we have achieved so many victories for animals in need. There's been so much progress, yet there's still so much to do. As part of our year-long celebration, we encourage you to become a member of our special Compassionate Circle program. With a monthly donation of $10 or more, you will have behind-the-scenes access to the work we are doing at Brother Wolf. Our goal is to reach 1,000 members because we receive no government funding. Working together, we can help build and sustain no-kill communities. Learn more at CompassionateCircle.BWAR.org. We are a 501c3 tax-deductible organization. And welcome back to the Computer America Show. It is 31 minutes past the hour as we continue on. Again, if you're just joining us, check out the entire interview. Uh, We are going to be wrapping up here shortly with, of course, Brian Jacket. He is, again, the Director of Public Relations at UMA. But the entire interview is available at ComputerAmerica.com, as well as iTunes, Google Play, Spreaker, Stitcher, uh, you know, anywhere. Um, Yeah, you know, you can, of course, check it out there. But we continue on. And again, we're just getting into the Internet security part of this. And you mentioned a couple ways that, um, you know, that, of course, you offer this. And again, it seems like one of those things that you... If you tried to do this in house, you know, just like I think with the secu- you know with the security cameras, uh, if you tried to do this in house, UMA would be spreading themselves too thin, obviously, because you know keeping a a good uh, series of definitions for uh, you, know, you know firewall protections and all that kind of thing. I mean, it's a full time job. So if you could tell us a little bit more about uh, you know why you chose Zscaler and you know, kind of their pedigree. I, I mean, you know, have I haven't really heard of them. Uh, has Zscaler been around for a while? And why did you decide to, you know, kind of go with Z, uh, a company like Zscaler? Yeah, so um, Zscaler is, uh, like I said before, they provide an enterprise class. Uh, I mean, the reason you probably haven't heard of them is that they really have not um, uh, provided a consumer-based uh, product and they really have serviced more of uh, the enterprise fortune 500 and other types of uh, uh, companies but they have this um, back-end system that obviously um, is very robust um, and like I said it th- you know it updates thousands of times a day um, to ward off of um, threats um, from you know malicious links and other types of um, malware, spyware, et cetera, that really help pr- protect consumers, um, in this case, c- protect consumers um, when they're browsing on, on the Internet. So, um, uh, you know, we, we were really excited to be working with them. Uh, uh, we think that this, this service is very, very important for our, um, our customers as they're looking at, um, uh, you know, ways to – to and you know protect the browsing and protect the access that uh, themselves as well as their children are um, taking advantage of on the the internet. Um, you know, obviously, in the day and age, the internet has become this very important medium um, right. for you know for learning, for accessing information, and for entertaining yourself. And so, we know that it's you know. That, we really can't turn back the clocks and say, well, it's, it's just a fad. It, I mean, it's not going anywhere. And talking about, you know, uh, talking about what to do online, I mean, I think it really becomes part of the conversation that you have with your children on anything, that it's, it's, 
it's that important and it's an ongoing conversation and putting in place these kind of um, uh, protections are a way that um, we can help families, uh, pro- you know, add a, add a you know, semblance of security and, and peace of mind uh, as well. Right. No, it, it's, it's like you said, not going away. In fact, it's, you know, almost mandatory now for, uh, you know, students nowadays, they submit their homework online, they have assignments that they need internet connection for. But of course, you want them going to, you know, maybe Wikipedia or maybe certain different sites, but you don't want them going to every site on the internet. So, you know, things like domain blacklisting and whitelisting, as I see you have here, very important. So, why don't we talk about right. how, how how to install this? Because, you know, I'm sure just like you know through some of Uma's other ventures, when it comes to, you know, people setting up this hardware themselves, it can be a little daunting because, you know, people are like, I've never set up a firewall before. I've never set up, uh, you know, uh, a home security system. So how hard is it to install this system? Uh, it's simple <laughs> you literally sign up for it i mean that the the, the the firmware that that enables these you know internet security and the whole zscaler powered um, package is already on your umatello it's just a matter of basically signing up for it and turning it on um and then you have a you manage it through a dashboard in my uma which is the the dashboard that customers are used to when they they've set up an uma device and then you um can set all the parameters that you want uh, whether it be you know, safe search, content filtering, website blacklist, website whitelist, traffic monitoring, and you can basically be as specific or kind of more general category type of blocking as you'd like. So specific meaning you can block specific sites, um, provide overriding password um, uh, 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 passwords to enable you to access those sites, you know, for the parents if they wanted to. Um, and then you can also, you know, be much more kind of broad stroked in terms of the content filtering and look at, you know, uh, at categories like, you know, adult websites and drugs, gambling, maybe gun sites, if you right. didn't want them to, to access that. Um, and it's, and you get, you know, you get reporting on a daily basis. Uh, you can kind of see what threats were blocked. You can make adjustments. Um, so it, it's really, really a simple, uh, uh, thing and, and you know the best part about it actually is that there's really no installation on any of the devices. Um, if you want a certain higher level of sec- like a, the highest level of security, you might need to install a certificate on on a device like a, a PC or a Mac. Mm-hmm. Um, but as long as these devices are on your network, they're protected. So you don't have to walk around the, and, and make sure that you know software is updated, the apps installed on all the different devices. It protects all the devices that are on the network using the connection. Right. So, and let's talk about some of the other solutions that maybe people already have installed. Because you know, if you have Windows 10, by by default, you it comes with like Windows Defender. Uh, there are many other virus scanners out there right. uh, from a lot of great companies, Norton, AVG, what have you. Um, do you know would someone still need a service like this if they already have a virus scanner on their computer? Well, I think so. I mean, I think that that you know, virus antivirus software is one component of this. I mean, it, it's but one thing that that's important to this. There's so many different other threats um, that can infect a computer. That uh, and and also the ability to blacklist and whitelist uh, different um, sites. Uh, you know, I, to prevent from you know accidental phishing. You know, hitting on accidental phishing links and emails. Um, Sites that will automatically install spyware or malware onto your computer. Um, uh, you know, I think that that that's that's where this really becomes an effective um, effective resource and effective tool um, because we really we look at not just you know antivirus. We look at uh, all these different types of threats. And like I said, Zscaler is, is updating thousands of times a day as it is. So the cloud-based aspect of this is really important because it, it's always updating. It's always providing um, advanced protections uh, for the devices themselves. So I think that's really beneficial to customers. And I would, you know, I, I think that, um, um, uh, you know, that's where, where the real benefit of this uh, comes into play. Right. 
No, and it, uh, again, it it seems very very simple, and it protects everything on, you know, on the entire network, which again is great because, let's face it, you know, people uh, come in, come out with phones all the time. Uh, you know, I have friends over, and you know, they they might of course let something into my entire network that I wouldn't that I wouldn't really want. This is great for that kind of thing. Why don't we talk right. about um cost? Because obviously, you know, if you're going to add to this, it's not something that um you're going to want to pay you know, a hundred dollars a month for or something like that. I, I mean, how much does something like this kind of cost? Yeah. So again, there's, there's no hardware. There's, there's no real installation other than just turning it on and it costs $3 and 99 cents a month. So it's very affordable for a uh, powerful protection for, for consumers and all the, all the family members. And I, you know, I think that the other ask, the other end of the spectrum, right, would be, um, you know, I mean, I don't know about you, but well, <laughs> you probably don't, but my parents always email me and, you know, with, you know, Hey, should I click on this link? Uh, is this, is this safe? You know, <laughs> um, I need to put a tello in their house and put internet security on and monitor it myself so that I, you know, <laughs> so, so they can be protected from themselves basically. Um, cause I think that the other end of the spectrum, you know, Technology neophytes that that you know can be easily susceptible to these types of scams um, are are you know just as important as protecting your own children from this stuff. No, absolutely, and you know I I I unfortunately fall for that myself sometimes. I think a lot of people do, and having the right tools in place before it happens is key to making sure it's not a life-ending right. event. It's, um, you know, very important. So no, that's great. And again, very, very affordable, uh, especially with, you know, the year option. So, you know, uh, we've of course touched lightly on the Telos, you know, you can go back to listen to many of our old shows. I mean, again, we've, uh, talked at length about, you know, how great the service alone is. And then it sounds like, you know, this is where Uma seems to really be expanding and really trying to, uh, carve a niche out is that, you know, you have a base station, you have a base station for your phone, but it seems like you're trying to make it that, you know, this thing is powerful enough that it can be a base station for multiple things. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, were, were yeah, there any I other features? That, oh, go ahead. What's, what's, in, what's important about this, if I may, just as kind of the wrap, wrapping up on, on our side is that, you know, I'd like to think that, um, you know, we look at, we look at the home phone we look at all the, the, the discussion about, you know, the future of the home phone and, and, you know, do people really want landlines anymore with the, you know, the proliferation of cell phones and smartphones. I, I, I'm firmly of the belief that not that people don't want landlines. They just, they simply don't want to pay for it. Um, so a product like ours, which is, you know, a hundred dollars up front um, and then, you know, four to $7 a month for taxes and fees, um, you know, you look at this now as a communications hub, but I'd like to think that customers might look at UMA first as a home security and internet security protector, and then secondarily um, as a home phone. And if that's the case, that's great. Um, it just proves the power of of our platform that we're developing. You know, the smart home integrations, the smart home phone features that we have, they all kind of go into the mix here um, at, you know, at very, very affordable prices as it compares to a lot of other um, services that are available or, or products that are available on the market. And I think that that's, you know, kind of an important component of all this is that, that we're really looking at this as, as a, you know, a home, protecting your home, whether it, protecting your home and then also providing you great communications from your home as well. Right. No, very well said. And again, it was great having Uma on to talk about this. For everyone out there, to be clear, Uma.com, check it out. We have a link in the show notes. And if you go to Uma for the home and, you know, just real quick. Uh, yeah, no. And there's also Uma for business, but uh, we're going to focus on the home for today. That would be an entire another hour show that we could do for the business side. But if you go to Uma <laughs> for the home and there are all the options right there across the top. And yeah, no. So uh, Brian Jacket again, the director of public relations at UMA. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us on the show. This was very enlightening, and no, thank thank you so much for being on. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me, Ben. I, I really appreciate uh, the time today, and uh, have a great rest of your week. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much, and everyone once again, UMA.com. Brian, thank you so much. Have a good one. 
Yeah, you too. All right, bye-bye. All right, and there he goes, everyone. So, again, you can check it out in the show notes, but uh, we talked about home security. If you're just joining us or you only caught the tail end of that interview, we talked home security and, you know, things like sensors, windows, doors, motion, uh, water sensors, things like that. You can, of course, check that out. And we also talked internet security, which you wouldn't think from a phone provider you would get internet security. But there you have it. So... Now, we are going to move on to computer and technology news, and this is our segment where we dedicate everything, anything and everything, to today's biggest technology announcements. And, you know, we try to keep it relevant for you, we try to keep it interesting, and we also try to keep it fresh, current. All these stories are from today, and they are, you know, they're all very interesting. And unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately, I mean, you know, always like spending more time with our guests. But, unfortunately, at the same time, because we're only going to be able to get to a few of these. And, you know, I think I'm going to go ahead and start with this one. This is something that we teased a couple of days ago. If I can find it, it's hiding somewhere in here. But we actually, you know, I know for a fact, actually, I didn't, uh, I didn't actually open it. But they're uh, NASA, you know them. NASA, they have unveiled their big announcement for what it was supposed to be. And yeah, they said that they're big news. And for anyone who didn't catch this, I believe we covered it Tuesday. And NASA said that they had big news for our, uh, you know, for Thursday about our moons in our solar system. And the big news, if I can find it, here we go. Uh, Yeah, I believe this is something close to it. And, you know, there's probably better, better better articles already out there. But this one, and we're going to go ahead and duplicate this. This coming from CBC News. And NASA is going to come out today and tell everyone, let us all know, that this is so cool. NASA reveals new data on ocean worlds in our solar system. That's right, ocean worlds. So... They're saying that if you're looking for life in the universe, you may not need to look any further than Saturn. By the way, once again, CBC, uh, CBC News, and this is, um, yeah, just posted by them. So, anyways, on Thursday, NASA announced that the icy moons of Saturn, Enceladus, holds a food source for potential life. Things just got a lot more interesting on that moon. Saying that not only that, but it's believed that Jupiter's moon Europa, another icy world, is also spewing water vapor into space. Saying that, uh, of course, though Earth is thought of as having the most abundant water in our neighborhood, recent research has found that some moons could contain their own oceans, where hidden beneath the icy crust, Enceladus, in particular, holds the most water in our solar system. That's right. As wet and as wild as you think Earth is, turns out Enceladus even more so. Although, of course, due to its distance from the Earth, it's uh, it's a bit of a snowball. But underneath that, that's right, saying that the small icy world in orbit around Saturn is believed to have an ocean of water beneath its icy crust. And saying that the images from Cassini, which NASA which is the NASA spacecraft that has been in orbit around Saturn since 2004, have captured plumes of water vapor spewing into space. And when the spacecraft flew through the plumes, it detected organic material, carbon dioxide, and carbon monoxide. Mm. So, they're saying that another one is, of course, Europa, that is orbiting around, I believe, Jupiter, where they said that NASA spotted plumes of water vapor uh, erupting, from the surface, and it's believed that a warm, salty ocean exists be- beneath its icy surface. So NASA has planned a mission to the moon called Europa Clipper, and it has proposed a landing mission, but it was canceled when the new president came into power. But regardless, it's still pretty cool. And while both moons are too far away to receive any direct warming from the sun, it, uh, it's believed that they are heated by squeezing as their orbit as they orbit their massive planets. And again, for size comparison, Jupiter and Saturn, massive, massive, massive. So I guess they believe that because they're so massive and as they orbit, the 
shape of the planet actually sh- you know kind of changes it squeezes you know it squeezes and decompresses and that kind of shifting kind of like a tectonic kind of deal but you know no proof of tectonics on there but just the friction that causes from the planet changing shape would be enough to warm the oceans and cause yeah liquid water liquid salt water oceans to be on these planets so that's right both of these moons are two of the best candidates for life in our solar system and that is what they will be announcing today and actually have announced uh, today just a matter of hours ago so if you're wondering what the big nasa secret was it was that well there's a pretty good chance if there's going to be life on i'm sorry in our solar system it's probably going to be that very cool so now there's another one i wanted to cover and this one is equal parts creepy and equal parts kind of cool because as i mentioned this is you know yeah of course i'm blocking ads but they're saying yeah you know they 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 have these websites and they tell you hey you're blocking ads it's like of course i am it's how you prevent viruses at any rate they're saying that uh, what may be the world's most expensive drone where the air force just demonstrated an autonomous f-16 that can fly and take out a target all by itself that's creepy and yet awesome saying that in a quest to meet and exceed the challenges of the future the u.s air force has been increasingly looking to unmanned systems saying that a recent test proved that an unmanned f-16 can now think and fight on its own and again when you think about things like uh watson which by the way gonna be on the show when you think about things like Wops, uh, Watson, Google Deep, uh, DeepMind, uh, and things like that, uh, you know, all these different companies, and of course, Lockheed Martin is going to have their own version as well. They're capable of taking in data, you know, just like you or I would with our eyeballs, but they can, of course, take data from uh, infrared sensors, motion, you know, of course, visuals, and they can process it and not think like a person, but think close enough where it can take data and it can act on that. I mean, heck, we just covered the artificial intelligence that could compete in poker. And when you think about, you know, poker is not flying an F-16, but poker is working with imperfect information where you don't strictly know what cards your opponent has. I mean, artificial intelligence is getting really advanced very quickly. So, and as an example of that, they're saying that they used F-16 drones before a realistic target for the F-35 to blow up in training. But on Monday, it announced fully autonomous air-to-air and ground strike capabilities as uh, as a new capability thanks to the joint research between Lockheed Martin and, of course, well, actually, uh, between the service or, of course, you know, the Air Force and Skunk Works. A lot of cool projects come out of Scott Works. In fact, even more projects that are even more cool don't come out because they're so cutting edge. But check it out. Not only did the F-16 drone figure out the best way to get there and execute a ground strike mission by itself, it was interrupted by an air threat, responded, and kept going. Neat. Saying that we've not only shown how an unmanned combat air vehicle can perform on its mission... Uh, when things go as planned, but also how it will react and adapt to unforeseen obstacles along the way. So, they're saying, but having F-16 drone uh, drones plan and fly their own missions is only part of a much larger picture, saying that the future of the U.S. Air Force may well depend on advanced platforms like the F-35's commanding fleets of unmanned drones, which can act as additional eyes, ears, and shooters in the sky during a battle. So think about how autonomous cars are now. Think of like Tesla. You know, Tesla is actually probably the best uh, analogy we can write or you know hope for in that Tesla not only takes data from an individual car and uses it to improve, you know, that particular car, but anything that happens to each car in the fleet can then be sent to all other cars in the fleet. So if you have an instance where, you know, where a traffic accident unfortunately occurs with one Tesla vehicle, they can input this, the, uh, you know, the information and they can better 
associate how to prevent or reduce that kind of accident. And every other car, all hundreds of thousands of cars, get that same kind of programming, and they all are better for it. They're betting that the F-16 drones, in the same way, are going to do the same thing. Where, you know, if one of them sees a threat, then the entire fleet knows that there's a threat. Or if they know that there's a target, if there's something that occurs with one of them, then all of them know instantaneously. Yes, this is sounding dystopian, but it's also very cool. So, they're saying that the Air the Air Force has what's called an open mission system, where it's designed all platforms to network together and share information, like I just said. Where essentially, even an unmanned drone that will, uh, will have decision-grade data fed to it from everything from satellites in the sky to radars on the ground. So it's not even other F-16s, but it's every piece of data. And, La- and Lockheed Martin calls it the Loyal Wingman Program, where drone systems like the old F-16s can seamlessly network with F-35s and think on its own feet. Very, very cool. Uh, again, a little scary, thinking about autonomous, uh, you know, let's call it what it is, weapons of war. But, um, you know, this is this is undoubtedly where the future is going. It's not going to be on the shoulders of people. It's going to be in the minds of artificial intelligence. So I think the other story that we should really get to, and we've been following this one for quite a while now, and does not seem to be ending any time now. This happened a couple years ago, and for those of you who do not remember his name, the man legally changed his name to .com, Kim.com, asked the Supreme Court to hear him out. This is coming from Jessica Condit from Engadget, saying that the founder of Mega Upload, if you remember them, they have since rebranded, they have since rebranded and become Mega, simply Mega. By the way, they've been on the show. It was a very enjoyable interview but they're still based out of New Zealand and he is trying to get $75 million back from U.S. authorities. Yeah, if you lose $75 million, you're going to fight that tooth tooth and nail as well. So here we go, saying that that Kim.com, the founder of file-sharing website Mega Upload, is taking his case to the United States Supreme Court. Hmm. Saying that he's petitioned the highest court in the land to overturn a ruling that allowed U.S. authorities to keep $75 million in assets seized from his raid at his house in Auckland, New Zealand in 2012. Saying that in the Supreme Court petition, .com's lawyers argue U.S. authorities unlawfully labeled him a fugitive, allowing them to seize his assets and those of other Mega Upload employees, even though they had never traveled to the States. If I'm recalling, the only connection to the United States he had was that, of course, he was violating many, many United States, um, you know, uh, copyright laws and copyright infringing, that kind of thing. He violated a ton of those, and I think he had servers or Mega Upload was founded. Even though he was in New Zealand the entire time, the U.S. still found a way to, you know, weasel their way in there. So... They're saying that if left undisturbed, the Fourth the fourth Circuit's decision enables the government to obtain civil forfeiture of every penny of a foreign citizen's foreign assets based on unproven allegations of the most novel, dubious United States crimes. That is the petition. So he's turning this into a fight for the people, and not just the people, but, you know, everyone in the world, saying that even if you're not a U.S. citizen, if you're not careful, this could happen to you. Anyone could be subject to illegal seizure of their property. 90 seconds. Oh, sorry about that. And he's saying that this is is all while .com is fighting extradition in New Zealand, saying that a lower lower and an appellate court have both ruled against .com, agreeing that that he should be shipped to the U.S. to face charges of racketeering, conspiracy, and money laundering saying that the extradition suit next heads to the Court of Appeal of New Zealand. 60 seconds. So, yeah, you know, he's still fighting for his money, but at the same time, the United States is still fighting for his freedom and whether or not to take it away from him. So, 
very interesting and again it read like something out of a movie but yeah i mean this guy was loaded u.s came in and seized everything it was the weirdest thing so at any rate everyone thank you so much for tuning into computer america that is just about all the time we have here today and i want to say tune in tomorrow as we have on ralph bond you know him, you love him yeah check it out so for everyone out there thank you so much for tuning in and catch us tomorrow until then bye everyone Ten seconds.